Well, hello and welcome to How to Do a SimNet Project. I'm Scott McLeod. I'm going to guide you through the steps involved in taking a SimNet project from its absolute beginning all the way through to submitting it for grading and looking at grading feedback. So let's get started. I'm going to begin from within SimNet and you can see that I have several tiles here with different sim paths and projects. Generally speaking, you should be doing a sim path for the chapter prior to trying to do the project. That will help build some skills. So for example, Word Chapter 1 sim path would be completed prior to you working on the actual project for Word Chapter 1's project, which is Independent Project 1-4 in this case. So we're going to assume that we've built some skills up for Chapter 1 already doing the sim path and now we're ready to do the project. With that in mind, I click on that tile and it takes me to the main page for that assignment. And all projects, whether they are independent projects or guided projects, will have this same one, two, three step process. And much of what we say for this independent project here will be true of guided projects. The only difference really is that guided projects have a little bit more explanation in the steps of the instructions. All right, so let's get into the download files step. And if this is your first project you've ever done in SimNet, then you should download and read the best practices document. So I'm going to click on that one. Once you've read it, it's the same for all projects, and you don't need to continue doing that. Just something you should look at once. It's a PDF file. Let's open it and it's a couple of pages long, three pages in this case, and it's got some valuable information on it that you really should read once through so that you don't have any problems with your projects being graded properly or being submitted properly. If you keep these practices in mind, you'll have a much smoother experience. I'll simply get into one item here that I think is important, and that is that you must always download your own work from within your own account and then submit that same file for grading. If you, for example, were to create a file from scratch and try to submit it, it would not be accepted. If you got a hold of someone else's file and try to submit it, it would not accept it. It has a digital signature for your own documents that are downloaded from within your account and it expects those and only those files to be uploaded. So keep that in mind. After having read best practices, let's move on to the instructions file and the starter file. You'll always have one of each, sometimes more than one start file. In this case, uh, I'm on a Windows machine, so I'm going to download instructions for it by clicking on that. And I am in Google Chrome, so my interface to these downloads may be a little different from yours if you're on a different browser. In Chrome, I'm getting the progress of my downloads down here at the bottom, and my interface to them when I want to open them is also there. I have clicked on the start file to download it, and I now see both of those downloads are complete. And basically, I want to open each. The instructions is a PDF file, and I'll open that directly from my downloads interface there. And I will want to probably do one of two things. Either I'm going to zoom in on that so it's at whatever zoom level is easy for me to work with. Uh, I may also want to print it, so it kind of depends on your own workflow. If you've got a wide monitor, if you've got no problem bouncing back and forth between the instructions and the actual document you're working on, then you might be fine the way it is. Some people like to print it and work from the printed document. That way they can just focus on having the document that they're working on open and not have to be bouncing back and forth. So whatever works for you. Maybe ideal if you have a dual monitor kind of situation or a very wide screen where you can see both in their entirety at the same time. In any case, the second thing you want to do here is open your starter file. You may want to show in folder because although the instructions file, if you don't know where it is, it doesn't make much difference. But you need to know where your document is because you'll be saving it. You might not finish it and you may need it again in another day. So you need to know where it is. So I would do show in folder probably for it. And again, this may be a slightly different interface for Google Chrome here as it is for you maybe in Firefox or some other browser. And of course, your set of downloaded files is going to be different than what I'm seeing here. But the document that I'm working on right now is here. It's called whatever your name is, my name there, and an expired letter. 
So you can always tell by the date and time that it's the most recent one. So you could move it, for example, from here to some other location like a flash drive. If you're in a lab situation, you might do that. Or you might move it to your desktop just so you can keep track of it and not be confused by the whole downloads area. So now I can open that document from my desktop or wherever it is that you have moved it to. Okay, now it opens in Word and I'm always going to need to enable it for editing so that's always going to be one of your first steps. Speaking of steps though, we should really be getting them from our instructions document. But notice what it will say in the first two steps. Open the expired letter document. If the document opens in protected view, as it did, click the Enable Editing button so you can modify it. It also tells you the file will be renamed automatically to include your name, as we saw, and that we should save it. And I will never ask you to change the project's name, so no worries on that one. Let's move to step three and actually do something productive to this file. It says apply the following formatting changes to the entire document. Select the entire document change the before and after paragraph spacing to zero points. So let's go back. I'm going to use Alt-Tab in Windows to bounce back and forth between instructions and document. So it wants us to use Control-A to select the entire document and then to change the paragraph after spacing to zero. There's a couple ways we can do this. One would be to take the paragraph group on the Home tab and click on the paragraph settings dialog box launcher there where we have access to paragraph before and after spacing. Currently it's 12. We want to change that after spacing to 0. So two clicks, six at a time from 12 down to 0. Click OK. And what you should see is some decreasing of blank space here in the document. It's a very subtle change, but that's what we were asked to do. Even if you couldn't see the difference, you should still do it because the grader will check for it. All right, back to the instructions. Last thing I will do here is change the line spacing to single. I'm still selected in my document there. I'm going to go back to the paragraph group, and I can drop the line spacing down. Single spacing is 1.0 spacing, so I can click on that. And you can see things are a little tighter here in terms of spacing. Back to the instructions. I've done 3A and 3B, and of course I would just continue on doing all those steps as asked. Some involve some typing, some involve just working on some formatting. Eventually all projects will come towards the end and ask you to save and close the document and then upload and save your project file in SimNet and submit it for grading. And so that's the part we want to take a look at next. So let's just assume that we've done all of the steps involved to this point. And so I will save the document here. I already know where it is and what it's called, so I don't have to worry about it here. And I will go ahead and close down Word. Now I put this file on my desktop, so when it's time to submit it for grading, I know where to look. So I'm going back here to my one, two, three step process. But keep in mind, it may have been a day or so since I started this process, so I may not have this SimNet window open at the moment when I'm ready to submit. And if not, of course, you can just come back to the project that you originally clicked in on and get right back to the screen. So now it's time to upload my file. And knowing that my file is on the desktop, I can scroll for it and locate it. And then... Once I'm looking at the right folder, I can identify the file itself. You can always check the date and time to make sure that it is the one you think it is, and then open it. Then it will say, do you want to submit the uploaded file? You might not be ready to have it graded because maybe you're not sure you're all done with it yet, and so you could hold off on that, but we'll normally just say, yeah, submit the file, and let's get it graded. Now you're waiting temporarily while that file is being uploaded and graded, and it jumps you to the grading information. So let's take a closer look. Of course, I didn't get a very good score here because I didn't do very much of the project, but let's take a look at a couple things. We have some details along the left that show you points and give you those original steps. And then we also have the document with some step numbers and some colors. 
So anything basically that is showing up in green is a good thing. Anything in blue is like partially right, partially wrong, and anything in red is totally wrong, meaning you got no points for it. So for example, these 3B correlates to step 3 here. So I'm going to open up step 3 and I can look at the details to see what I missed and maybe what I got correct. In this case, for example, step 3 is not completely correct because I never did step 3D. And so you can pretty much drill into the details of what you got marked off on and what you got right. This is important because you get multiple tries in this class. In this class, I give you three attempts. So if you don't like your score initially, no worries. Look at what's wrong with it here. Make some notes. And then you can go right back to your same file. You don't need to start over. You go right back to your same file. And then you can just work from there and correct the things that you got wrong and improve your score by submitting it a second time and maybe even a third time as needed. So that's why I recommend everybody try to get your initial submission in early. So that'll give you time for a second or even third submission to really improve your score. Because a lot of times it's just a little detail that you can easily fix and get a substantial increase in your overall score from just a few minor changes. All right, so when you're done with that, you can go back to your assignment screen. You can always go to grades and take a look at your scores. But in any case, that's the basic steps involved in doing a project. So I hope that leads to your success in future projects. Thank you.